Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be exploring the world of Windows productivity on these M1 Max MacBook Pro. Previously, I used the M1 MacBook Pro and back then it wasn't working as good as I hoped it would. A lot of issues installing applications and now things have changed, things have gotten better. In this performance review, we're going to be checking out Windows, Autodesk and Visual Studio, seeing if we can bomb them and uh, we can, we can do really well. Animating away. It's compiling the code. Oh, we are on a Mac using parallels to virtualize Windows on ARM to run Visual Studio in 32 bit mode to compile Unreal Engine for Win64. <laughs> now, first up, I'm using Windows using something called Parallels Desktop. Parallels Desktop is a virtual machine. It's paid software. I'll have a coupon code in the description, but it's paid software. So the fact is that you have to pay money, obviously. And secondly, don't get a Mac for Windows. Just don't do it. The good thing about being able to run Windows on a Mac is because you can out of convenience and just say you want to do something. But if you want to actually be using Windows, you need a Windows computer. And it's a virtual machine Windows, which means it's not going to be as fast as native Windows. And it's ARM version of Windows, so it's not going to be fast as native Windows, but that's not to say that you can't do Windows on it. Previously, we had something called Boot Camp, which you could install the real Windows on the actual metal of the Macs. Of course, now we're just limited to virtual machines. Now, in the world of virtual machines, Parallels is paid for your software. There's also something called VMware. That one isn't working that too good. And there's also something called VirtualBox. That one is free, but again, it's not going to be as slick as Parallels. So I'm showing you Parallels. And one good thing about Parallels, even though I'm actually using 24 gigabytes of RAM, 24 gigabytes of RAM usage in Activity Monitor on Mac. Because Macs, they're kind of clever on the way they handle their memory, it shows that I'm actually using 50 gigabytes in this Windows 11. And most of it is just compressed. It's compressed 35 gigabytes of the memory, and it's only actually using 14 gigabytes. So it's got some clever memory management situation. So even though you're using lots of gigabytes of RAM, it compresses and uncompresses it really fast, so you don't notice any performance issues. Check out my video on 32 versus 64 to see how good it goes. But yeah, parallels, hogging a lot of memory, but it's not much slowdowns on the system. So in this video that you're gonna be watching, I'm actually gonna be recording the background. So using, I'm actually recording the screen in QuickTime. Look at that, it's running right now. I'm, I'm unzipping some files at the moment. Shall I wait until it finishes? You know, I'm not even gonna wait. I'm gonna jump straight into 3D Studio Max. So 3D Studio Max here, this is an old project I used to work on and got a bunch of beautiful camels here. I'll start them playing, animating away. Got a car over here, move the view around. Remember, I'm recording the screen and unzipping. So if you need to load the 3D model on the bind, I've got some basic stuff on the screen right there, working really well. Next up, I'll show you AutoCAD. Now AutoCAD is available on Mac now, so I don't know why I'm showing you it, but I'll show you it nonetheless it's on my screen. And this file, very, very smooth, very, very fast. Well, it's not unusable like before. Hiding objects, unhiding objects, seems to be working fast. And this is a basic project, of course, with AutoCAD, if you have a massive project, it's gonna run slow no matter what. But as you can see, it's running over here and there is a Mac version of AutoCAD, so probably don't care about that one so much. But let's look at the world of Revit. Revit is Windows only. And that one's big in the world of design. You can see it's up and running, it is a bit slow, but that's Autodesk for you. I am able to pan around this sample project, select files, move stuff around. Yep, so um, it's definitely usable. Would I get this computer to use Revit? No, I wouldn't, okay? But it's definitely usable, it's on the screen it managed to install previously. When I had it on the M1, back in the day, the old versions of Windows, it wouldn't even install, but I've managed to get it installing, so I'm happy about that progress. Now we're gonna jump into the world of Visual Studio. So, 2008, I hit set up, it says this app can't run on your PC. It's a 32-bit app. I'm using 64-bit ARM Windows, and it's just not working here. I do have Visual Studio 2010 up and running though, and it's going through the project files, is converting the project, Visual Studio is working, C++ is working. I'm gonna go ahead and start building it and you'll see that it can start compiling it. So in the meantime, while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and install the newer version of Visual Studio and Visual Studio Community 2019. I'll click install on that. And I wanna use ASP, I wanna use Azure, Node, 
Python, .NET, C++, Universal Windows, pretty much all the applications. I'll try and install as much as possible. Now, when you do run the installer, Visual Studio Installer, it says we've detected you're using an ARM and it's not compatible with ARM and you might run into issues if you use the ARM version. We're going to see what we can do with this Visual Studio. I've got a massive Unreal Engine. I'm going to try compiling Unreal Engine 5 in Windows. You might think that's stupid, but if you wanted to make a Windows game, you need to use Windows to make the Windows game. You can't use Mac to make the Windows game. Just like the same way, if you want to make a Mac game, you can't use Windows to make Mac. So maybe you want to talk to yourself. Rebuild started. I kind of already built it. I was too excited. I did it when the camera was off. Yeah, it is compiling it. Look at it right there. It's compiling the code. So we are on a Mac using parallels to virtualize Windows on ARM to run Visual Studio in 32-bit mode to compile Unreal Engine for Win64. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, activity monitor-wise, we can see Windows is using 48 gigabytes, of which 31 gigabytes is compressed. Bombing it on the CPU, but the GPU isn't doing much, and it's compiling the code. Maybe what I'll do next is, if you guys want, probably won't do it, but I'll get my Alienware desktop computer and see which one compiles fastest. Probably not. Just the fact that it's compiling is pretty good. Again, don't get a Mac for Windows. And Windows itself is very slick. Like, look at this. The start menu pops up and down. And I do have the full version of Windows. I use my Windows 10 Pro key and it worked. So that's, that's good. You do get the choice of which version of Windows you want to store. So you have to use a Windows Insider program email address. They are free to register. There's, as soon as you install Parallels, it kind of guides you through and what you need to do. And you choose what kind of channel you want to do. So I've, I'm on a dev channel because I was hoping to get the Amazon App Store. It's not there on there. But there's the beta channel and the release preview channel. Maybe that one is safer, the release preview, to get a less bugs, all that kind of stuff. But like I said, Windows up and running, seems to be fine. And we also managed to get 3D Mark up and running previously in our last test. And that one was running really well. So we've got 3D performance, you got Autodesk performance, and you got Visual Studio running the show. So do I recommend this Mac for Windows? Of course not. I already told you that before. Don't get this Mac for Windows. But if you are in a bind, it's kind of nice that you're able to have this virtual machine. It doesn't take up much usage. Look, I can still jump into Chrome right now. So I'll give it a work in progress pass. Pretty good. Pretty happy with that. A lot better than how it was six months ago with the M1 MacBook Pros. Point is, let me know what you guys think. Is this good enough for running your Windows productivity applications? Have I missed a Windows productivity application that you guys want to be using on these Windows machines? Let me know in the comment section below. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Animating away. It's compiling the code. And just remember, all of this time, I was QuickTime screen recording.